Hi, welcome. My name is Steve Bolton, and this is the Business Survival Guide, the first presentation in a series of three. Uh, some contact details you can see there. Uh, please feel free to share this information if you think it might be of value to other uh, business owners around the world, but UK specifically, which is where I'm based. Uh, some contact details there. Uh, please note these are the views of me as an individual, okay, as opposed to any of the organizations that I'm part of. So why am I putting this together? Uh, fundamentally, I one of my businesses was devastated, had to close down, had to go into voluntary liquidation as a consequence of a pandemic, foot and mouth disease. That's you may remember early 2000s, 2001, where it really took hold. There were 2000 cases, but 6 million livestock uh, had to be slaughtered as a consequence of that. And the knock on impact of that, I had a construction business at the time uh, with a business partner and essentially our uh, teams could not go on to land and build anything. And if you don't build anything, you don't get paid. So an external event had a trickle down impact, which ended up me having to put a business into voluntary liquidation, go through that whole process, um, selling my family home to avoid bankruptcy because I had some equity in my property, uh, saved me from going bankrupt. And ever since then, really, was that nearly 20 years ago, um, I've been very passionate about helping other people uh, avoid the kind of mistakes that I made, learn the lessons that I learned the very, very hard way uh, and help people create successful businesses, strong businesses, thriving businesses that are um, you know, great for the community. They employ people, they, we pay, business owners pay tax, We've got a real passion for business. Uh, business owners pay tax, they create jobs, pay mortgages, VAT, all of that sort of thing, you know, provide goods and services uh, to customers that add value uh, to their lives and solve problems. So a really passionate advocate for businesses uh, and therefore putting this series together is to really uh, help business owners through three phases that I believe are going to be, uh, you know, become apparent and important as we move through this. So I'm an optimist. If you ask anybody, they will say, you know, Steve's very optimistic, very solution focused. OK, so I hope for the best plan for the worst. All right. And overreacting is better than non-reaction. So the purpose of this first presentation is really to drive awareness of the worst case scenario that could come and get you, if you haven't already done so, to face your fears, face the demon, look them in the eye uh, in terms of the worst case scenario. What's the worst that could happen for you and your business and plan for that? It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I don't want it to happen. None of us want it to happen. But if you face up to that reality, then you know what the worst case is and you can put contingency plans in place to overcome that. So I think there's three phases of understanding and this is how the presentation is going to kind of three presentations are going to fit together. The first is awareness. That's what this one is all about. Then it's about taking responsibility. We'll talk a little bit about that at the end of this presentation and then fundamentally uh, taking action. All right. And a great way to sort of look at things is on a, on a spectrum. You can do this in, in lots of areas. But in terms of your awareness of the impact of coronavirus in your on your business and what's going to happen to our society, um, at one end of the spectrum, the kind of the minus 10 end is it's fake news, conspiracy theory. At the other end, it's it's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. It's warlike times or in the middle, you know, is is kind of a level of neutrality, not particularly concerned about it. All right, my responsibility, I feel, during this presentation and other ones, is to move people from wherever they are to minus 10 to zero, further and further up the scale, okay? Not because it's what we want to happen, but as I say, if you, if you look at it in the eye, the worst case scenario, and you course correct and adjust proactively, as soon as possible, you stand the best chance of success and survival uh, as we go into what I believe is going to become a very challenging phase and a very period, uh, a very uh, great period of disruption and social unrest, which um, I believe is coming. But let's hope for the best plan for the worst, as I say. So first thing is, um, you may already understand this, ap uh, apologize in advance if I'm teaching you to suck eggs on anything in here, but exponential growth, intellectually, majority of people understand it. Just in case they don't, um, then the best way to kind of look at that is to uh, think about who wants to be a millionaire, the TV show, okay, where basically you can see on the chart they're going from one, it's 15 steps to go from a hundred pound doubling, okay, up to a million. Another way to look at it is actually, if you look at 
from five up to 15. So just 10 steps is a thousand percent increase. You go from a thousand pound doubling. OK, 10, just got to do it 10 times and you're up to a million. So whilst we all I think the majority of people will understand this at an intellectual level, um, in a practical sense, when this actually happens, when things really do start to compound, OK, um, especially with something like the coronavirus, um, it's actually hard to get your head around it, even though you understand the logical concept of it. All right. So what I'm going to try and do is, is help you understand that in a practical sense of how this might play out. So here's a chart from China. You can see the exponential growth that's showing the exponential growth curve. Um, that curve flattened very quickly in China. OK, and we're going to talk about that because it's really important to understand that. But understand what caused that to flatten in China is very different to what's happening in the UK and Europe. OK, so there's a, an exponential curve in terms of the number of reported cases as well as the deaths. And I think really important distinction to make here is reported cases. Right. They've stopped testing in uh, in the UK. I phoned 111 yesterday, the National Health Service online, you know, and, um, you know, doing a fantastic job. You can tell the guy was super stressed trying to get the information to me as quickly as possible. But testing is stopped. You know, they're saying don't come into the hospital. Don't go to your GP um, from a testing point of view they are going to be they're already overwhelmed um, and it's just going to get worse okay so depending on the studies you read the actual numbers of um, cases okay where people have been diagnosed is whatever the number is times it by 10 20 30 40 50 simply we do not know but we know it's a lot not lot higher uh, than the reported cases Exponential growth, as you can see uh, in the US, ticking along, ticking along um, till the 1st of March. And then the 14th of March went from 76 cases up to 2,175. Just going to keep um, expounding exponentially from there. Let's have a look at this. 12th of January, globally, there were just 42 reported cases in just three countries. We all know it started in China, OK, and then spread out from there. So that's just over two months ago. There's a great map there. If you want to um, click the link, you can do and you'll see it kind of how it spread it spread day by day. But that's kind of where it ended up as of the 14th of March. So essentially, we've gone from that. OK, in two months to that. OK, global penetration in terms of the numbers. Uh, we went up to we're now at 100. And as of this morning, recording this 170,000 cases from just 42 two months ago. OK, so that's the exponential curve in a practical sense. Remember, times those numbers by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 to get the kind of the, a sense of the number of cases. And it's just going to continue to uh, exponentially increase. So in terms of global cases and deaths as of 15th of March, OK, the total reported cases, 170,000 we've seen. Uh, total number of deaths nearing on 7,000 and growing at an exponential rate. So let's uh, look at positive. China's numbers started to flatten off. Why? They've rolled out perhaps the most ambitious, agile and aggressive disease containment effort in history. All right. They put at least 50 million people in mandatory, mandatory quarantine since the 23rd of January, not even a month ago. OK, um, in Wuhan alone, more than 1800 teams of five or more people trace tens of thousands of contacts. OK, so radical, massive action. Is Europe like China? No, it's not. We're not a communist state. We don't have the resources to have just in one town alone, one city alone to have 1800 teams of five or more people going around testing people, putting them in quarantine, building hospitals in 24, 48 hours. All right. Completely different uh, scenario. So when people if ever you hear people saying, oh, but yeah, China got it under control, it's going to taper off personally. Um, I don't believe that. And the data does not support that when you compare it on a like for like basis. So let's look at Europe as of the 13th of March. That was the reported cases. It's going to get out of date very, very quickly. What's happening in Italy? It's like a world war. All right. The temporary closing down. You've got makeshift hospitals. You can see there a queue to the supermarket. All right. Two meters apart, people wearing face masks, people wearing gloves, people having to queue for hours to get basic supplies 
from supermarket. Most of the shops, apart from pharmacies and supermarkets, um, have actually closed down. Right? People are not allowed to leave their towns or their cities or their vill villages. They're kind of locking this thing down and containing it. And I think going back to the exponential point, all right, Italy, deaths have risen in 24 hours, the last 24 hours, okay, by 25%. Okay, so it's just the, the, the outbreak now has gone up from 1,441 deaths to 1,800. All right, so you're starting to see the exponential increase in what is going on in Italy. What about the rest of Europe? Serbia today, uh, or yesterday, sorry, yesterday evening, um, declared a state of emergency over coronavirus. Um, Ukraine railways halting all trains, stopping movement. People are not being allowed now to move between towns on, on trains, locking, locking the area down. Um, the Dutch queues for cannabis as coronavirus closes cafes. All right. And the Irish government have asked all pubs to close until March the 29th. I believe it's going to be quite a lot longer than that. OK, um, so you can see that some of the cultural differences there. And I think it's going to be important to keep a positive mindset and to uh, to look on the bright side of things as well. Uh, what about Spain? This is from a person I know and trust and have worked with for a long time. Thanks, Steve. Please, please get ready now, because when it happens, everything will go like the speed of lightning. Make sure you fill up the fridge, go and buy paracetamol, purchase gloves, masks if you're not too late and large glasses if possible. So far, the first measure was to close the schools on Tuesday. That turned out to be a horrible idea. Most people decided to ask from holidays from work so they could take care of their kids. And they acted as if they were on holiday with the great weather. Everyone went to the parks uh, and the terraces, so nobody took it seriously. That obviously compounded the, uh, the spreading increase. It was not until yesterday that things changed. They closed everything except supermarkets, pharmacies. OK, um, no deliveries from supermarkets were available. So yesterday I had to go to the supermarket wearing gloves, a mask. And when I got home, my wife cleaned and disinfected everything. I would start suggesting you start. Uh, I would suggest you start thinking how many times you touch things uh, when you're outside. And my conclusion is the only way you're safe is do not wander outside. I hope everything goes away soon. Just on the positive side, I know a couple of people that got um, coronavirus and the symptoms were just some fever and some mu muscle aches. I hope this helps. OK, so that's a friend that I know, like and trust. That was last Tuesday in Spain going into lockdown. OK, so what about the UK? Well, we've had deaths doubling in 24 hours. People saying it was predictable. predictable. We're on the same trajectory as Italy. And a lot of studies sort of show we're somewhere between, in most people's estimations, 10 to 14 days behind Italy. This particular chart shows 13 days behind Italy. OK, so if you want to get a sense of what's coming, I recommend strongly as an action, if you're low on the awareness scale, you're not near the kind of plus five to 10 range in terms of how you're thinking about how this is going to play out. I would strongly encourage you just do your research. OK, what's happening in the rest of Europe? Italy is ahead of us. Spain's ahead of us, um, ahead of us in terms of cases and deaths. Um, as is Germany, as is France. OK, um, so have a have a look at what's happening. OK, don't consume too much news, but consume enough and from good sources. So you actually understand what's happening and what is likely to come down the pipe. So what about the UK? Boris Johnson, how many times in our lifetime have we heard the prime minister addressing the nation saying many more families are going to lose loved ones? OK, uh, they also came out yesterday saying we are days, weeks away from anybody over the age of 70 being forced not to leave their home to essentially self-isolate. OK, self-isolation is coming down. I'm getting my grand, my, my parents ready That's in their 70s and 80s. OK, we just bought a kind of a live webcam Facebook portal, set it up in my mum's flat so that we can actually get her used to using it, communicate with her because the government are saying that older people are going to be locked down for many, many months. OK, and there's going to be a psychological impact to this as well as an economic impact to it. So um, but UK shielding the economy, but not yet. It's people base rate dropped by half a percent. OK. It's likely that it might even go to zero percent, un unprecedented. OK, statutory sick pay paid by the government 
business loans being made available, residential mortgage payment holidays being discussed. OK, already happened in Italy. There's always three lenders in the UK that if you've got Corona, um, then basically, um, you know, write to your lender. We'll talk about more of that in, in the next two presentations. OK, but there is going to be flexibility from government on tax. There's going to be flexibility from mortgage lenders with regard to payment holidays, I believe, for the next three to six months. OK, but we'll talk more about that and I'll show you some evidence of that in, in some of the later presentations. OK, and then 30 billion pounds, 39 billion dollar spending packages and probably more going to be coming down the pipe as well. So what about the UK? We're not at this stage yet. This is um, these are real scenarios that have actually happened. You know, I'm going to the supermarket, looking what's going on. Things like obviously loo roll, but eggs, um, pasta, you know, certain things are, are being purchased. As you can see from my friend in Spain, home deliveries. How, how much longer are we actually going to have home deliveries and, and shopping? So obviously the guidance is um, don't do panic buying. OK. Um, but actually make sure you have the uh, what you need, if you like, for your families. But let's you know seriously hope that, I mean, if it gets to that stage, I think they're going to have to bring in security and, and that sort of thing just to just to control what is going on uh, in the UK as we develop. Um, so death rates by age group. OK, remember that existing health conditions have a significant impact on this. All right. But essentially, the data is showing that one in seven over 80 years of age that gets coronavirus, uh, it will be fatal. One in 12 from 70 to 79 years of age. One in 27 from 60 to 69 years of age. One in 76 in my age bracket, 50 to 59 years of age. Then one in 250 over 40 and then one in 500. And then, you know, thankfully um, that, you know, young children, babies, you know, zero percent uh, risk there. And then very, very low risk all the way up to 30, 40 years of age. OK, so that's just really having an understanding of older people obviously need to be protected. Um, isolated, you know, follow all the all the medical guidance. I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to give any kind of medical advice. This is a business focused kind of presentation. So in summary, I believe it's very hard for people to imagine the exponential impact of the coronavirus. Coronavirus People are just carrying on as normal. I was at a wedding at the weekend. You know, people were calling me the Grim Reaper um, because I'm just trying to raise awareness, not because I want to scare people, not because I want to. Um, actually, I do want to scare people to a degree. You know, I want to get people to wake up as to what the worst case scenarios could be so that they can proactively take preventative action. But I believe the world's going to change radically over the next few weeks and months. I think that the impact on your life and business could be devastating if you are not prepared. So the sooner you progress through higher levels of awareness, higher levels of responsibility, higher levels of action, the better. OK, so let's just get really practical. Three, actually not three, more than three. It was three when I started. Um, six critical actions. OK, face up to the worst case scenarios in a business and financial sense. And I'll explain how you can do that. Talk to key stakeholders. If you've got business partners, if you've got other key advisors, people that you work with, you're obviously already probably talking that through, you know, significant others. Um, make them aware that the situation could get very bad. Right. Don't let other people lull you into a false sense of security with this. Right. There's an old saying that we become or we take on the. Um, ideas and views of the five people or the people that we spend most time with. So if you're surrounded by people that, oh, it's all going to be fine, it's all going to be OK, business as usual. All right. I strongly encourage you do your own research. You know, you've seen this presentation, do some more research, spend time digging into this and then extrapolating. If what happens in other European countries happens in the UK, what would that what the impact be on my business or what could it be on my business? All right. Start thinking that through. Um, join some local support groups. There's great groups on Facebook, um, actually, in your local community. See if you can find them. OK, if not, maybe set one up. But actually what you'll find, there's one in Bournemouth. There's 80,000 members on there. Uh, sorry, there's 11,000 members with that 80,000 um, posts and comments already, OK, to do with coronavirus. People saying I'm self-isolating. This is happening. I've run out of this. Um, people offering support. You know, if you can't go out and go shopping or if you're ill or if you need certain supplies, let me know. I'll go out and do the shopping for you. OK, so, so I think it's going to really bring us together as a business community and as local communities got the got the p p potential uh, to do that. 
Um, so get educated, limit your news consumption, maybe once, twice a day, get the facts that you need. And then whatever you do, don't just sit there with the TV on or the live kind of social media feed going on because it's not going to be good for your headspace, okay, and your, your psychology and your mental health, all right? Mental health is going to be a real issue as we move through this, especially compounded by the isolation as well as the bad news that is just going to keep coming for months and months and months, all right? And I think it's it's going to going to peak um, in sort of May, June, July time. All right. So it's going to ramp up. It's, it's my view. May, June, July is going to be pretty horrific, actually, in terms of what the news and what's what's actually going on in the world. Um, and then hopefully we will start to um, start to taper off um, come the autumn. All right. But it's going to be playing out like this all over the world. All right. What happened in China, then Europe, and then it's going to happen in US. OK. And then Africa and um, Latin America, and that kind of thing. It's going to gradually phase around the world, this thing. OK. Over the next 12 months. Um, but the peak in the UK, I believe, and the research is not me, it's the data. The data says it's going to be May, June and July is going to be the peak time for this. OK, um, and then the most practical action you can do before the next presentation moves on real uh, detail in terms of the business stuff is do your personal cash flows. OK, so um, got a cash flow forecasting tool. You can get it on the, the Bolt network for free. You know, you don't have to kind of um, do anything. You just kind of access it there through the Facebook group. There'll also be discussions there as well. If you've got any problems or issues with it, you can kind of put comments. There's about 600 odd people at the moment in that community in a business sense, all supporting, working together, helping each other, as well as me going in there every day uh, and contributing to that as well. Okay. Um, so basically what I've done is I've created for you three personal cash flow forecasts. OK, the first, if you haven't already got one, is a normal one on a month by month basis. You can kind of see it there. All right. So it just takes each month. All of the fields are automatically calculated. All you've got to do is put in your income lines and your expenditure lines and that just a forecast in a normal pre coronavirus situation. You might already have one of these. So that's great. OK, then what I recommend you do is you do two other ones. OK, you do this one, which is a worst case Corona personal cash flow. And essentially what happens in that one is you're just going to decimate your income lines. All right. Assume, as you can see there, I mean, these are just made up numbers, right? Uh, this is a fictional kind of um, sheet uh, for somebody OK, um, who's got a job who's got um, or, you know, it's a couple. Essentially, this one is um, created for um Somebody's working uh, sort of full time. They've got a consultancy business. They've got um, some investment income in terms of stock market and ISAs and that kind of thing. Um, they've got some single occupancy buy to lets. They've got houses in multiple occupation, um, a sort of property portfolio generating really nice levels of income, about eight houses in this example. Um, they've got some loan income. And so what I've done is I've just literally said salary's gone, consulting income. Actually, that's not been deleted, but you know, that, that can be deleted. Buy to let income, that can be reduced. HMO income can be reduced. Okay. And these are your numbers. You can kind of play around with it. So what do you think is the worst that can happen? Um, so on one spreadsheet, you do that and then you but you don't change any of your cost lines, any of your expense lines. All right. You leave those as they are. And then that will show you your net negative cash flow. What's your peak negative cash flow over the coming months? My suggestion is to kind of decimate this from April, May, June, July, August, September. OK, so six months, essentially, um, where you're just really going to take an axe to your income lines. Then the second scenario planner is you're going to do the same thing with your cost line. So decimate the income lines, but also look at what cost can you save? Where can you save? Um, you know, and we'll, we'll go in. We'll go into some of the actions that you can take um, in the next two presentations and get really kind of practical uh, on that. OK, so that's what you can do in terms of what's next. So second presentation in the business survival guide, how to avoid the biggest mistakes that business owners make in a crisis, having been through one, lost a business, been there, done it. Um, you know, I can talk from personal experience. I've also consulted with a number of very successful businesses that have run into difficulty and we managed to turn them around. OK, so taking preventative action, really important. Take responsibility for the impact in your business business scenario planning and cash flow forecasting we'll talk about next why cash is king cash is absolutely like you know pure gold at the moment pure gold dust literally okay so cash is king how can you preserve it how can you find it how can you access more of it what do you need to do before taking corrective action okay don't just Right, we're going to cut this. All those jobs are going to go. That's going to happen. This is going to happen. Not going to pay the mortgage. You know, 
You actually need to do this in a planned and measured way. I'm not talking about taking weeks about doing it, but I am talking about a few days to just kind of let this settle, start doing the planning, start doing the forecasting, all right, and then start strategically, right, this is the plan, this is what we're going to do this week, next week, and this is how we're going to roll it out. This is These are the people we're going to communicate with, all right, we'll cover all, all, all of that, the humanistic side as well as the very practical side. Importantly, how do you balance the mercenary need for survival if you're in that place with the missionary need to help others? OK, there's got a, there could be a real human cost to this. All right. Well, some businesses might think going to lay off all the staff. All right. That's not what um, I'm doing in any of the businesses that I'm involved with or advocating in any of those businesses. OK, let's sack everybody. Let's shut our doors for six months and start again. All right. Business is going to come out the other side of this. OK, there's going to be a lot of businesses that are badly affected. You want to be in a if you can get through this, you want to be in a position of strength because the opportunities that are going to come when this is over. All right. Are going to be significant. Probably the products and services that you offer are going to be as needed, if not more so in some cases, post coronavirus as they were pre coronavirus. All right. But there'll probably be less competition and um, yeah, more more opportunity. All right. So don't make knee jerk reactions. And then understanding the psychology of a market cycle and how to react to a fall. OK, so I hope that's useful. Um, you know, there's some practical stuff in there. Most practical thing is that cash flow forecasting tool. That's where you can kind of access it on the Bolt Network Facebook group. OK, so have a look at that. What's next? And then this is the psychology of a market cycle that we're going to start getting into. OK, but very practically, uh, we're going to start moving in, in in the next presentations. You know, should you buy property at the moment? OK, what if you've just bought a property? What if you've just bought a business or you're looking to buy a business? What about any growth plans that you had? What what should could you you know, what should you do if all your customers are currently telling you, no, things are fine. It's OK. It's just a passing blip. You know, do you believe them? Um, or do you actually do you, do you want to educate them? Do you want to keep stum and not say anything? All right. So there's all these kind of choices and decisions um, modeling the impact. You know, if you've got houses, tenant, a tenant still going to pay the rent, a tenant still going to have a job. There's all these kind of fears and concerns that you might have. OK, so we're going to address all of those in some of the coming presentations. Uh, we're also going to have those discussions. I'm not right. You know, I'm not an oracle. I can't see the future. I can't predict anything with complete accuracy. But what I do know, having been through this and lived through a business failure, OK, if you hope for the best and plan for the worst, that is the best possible thing that you can do. That's the best possible guidance that I can give you at this moment in time is hope for the best, but plan for the worst. But plan in a way that's very granular and practical and logical. OK, um, so you can actually look at it in a, in a numeric sense and then you can start to make some choices and decisions. OK, so I hope there's some stuff in value in there. Please feel free to uh, share it uh, as you want to. Um, contact details are there, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, as you wish. Uh, and just a reminder again, this is my personal perspective. Uh, wish you the very best. Hope this has uh, been of use to you. Please get in contact and uh, let's support each other, you know, as a community, as a business community, um, as a social community. All right. As fellow human beings, as we go through and live through something that we've never lived through before in our lifetimes, um, that sense of community and support um, and encouragement is going to be super, super, super important. So wish you the very best and uh, I'll see you again soon.